North Sulawesi, Indonesia. Here, the main source of income for small-scale farmers is sugar palm. Lots of firewood is used in processing the sugar, yet one more pressure on the dwindling tropical forest. But through the vision of one man, energy from deep underground is replacing firewood. A cooperative has been formed which is boosting incomes, with profits being channelled into a wildlife sanctuary. Sugar palms. For generations on the island of Sulawesi, it was the main sweetener, as well as a source of a little extra cash. I've been making palm sugar for about 50 years, since I was young. The tappers collect the sap by making cuts in the flower stems. Willie Smits is a Dutch-born tropical forest ecologist who's lived in Indonesia for 30 years. He witnessed the hardship of the tappers. Even today, the process is labor-intensive. He cuts off these sheets of leaf that cover the stem. There are lots of ends. It's quite dangerous work up there in the tree. And then he starts beating it from the bottom in rings all around it and towards the end of the stem. The intention is to break the internal connections between the vessels in the stem so that when the time is ripe to cut off this stem, that it will immediately start dripping. The processing of the sap into solid sugar requires energy, and to the farmers here, the most ready and affordable source was timber. I used to take the wood from the forest, cut it, and then put it in the fire. To make this kind of fire, I used half a cubic meter of wood every day. The sugar had a limited local market because the taste and texture varied from farmer to farmer. Sugar is just poured into half coconut shells, but it contains a lot of contaminations. There are uh, bees in it, there's some ash of the fire going in, which is all not so good. With sugar going unsold, an industry has developed making alcohol. Called Capticus, the potent spirit was a way of maximizing profit. This drink, what that can do to the livers of people. I'll show you what amount of alcohol is in here. You can see it's burning immediately, see? Watch out, your camera is burning. In 2006, Willie Smith set up the Masarang Foundation to wean farmer tappers from firewood and the moonshine. Smith claims that by making the sugar marketable and finding an alternative to firewood, the foundation has doubled its income and helped save the jungle. Energy yang masih terkandung di spirited water atau air yang terpisahkan dari separator itu cukup besar karena temperatur di air situ 180 derajat. The Pertamina power station started operating in 1996. It's powered by geothermal heat, a limitless form of energy from beneath the Earth's crust. Willie Smits realized the waste steam could be used to heat the pans used for traditional sugar production. So he organized for the steam to be piped to the Masarang sugar factory. Here, instead of burning wood to heat the pans, the steam does it saving its estimated more than 200,000 trees a year. And it's the first for us in Indonesia that we utilize our steam and steam energy right to the people, straight to the people for social corporate responsibility. The steam is only passing through the factory and we only extract the heat, nothing else. And we are actually helping the electricity company to produce more water that can be re-injected to produce more electricity in the future. So it's a true win-win solution. 200,000 trees less cut by the farmers and these people are being helped in cooling their water and the whole environment benefits as a result. Kenapa saya memilih Pak Willy sebagai partner? Karena Yayasan Masarang ini adalah suatu yayasan lingkungan hidup yang non-profit yang tidak mencari keuntungan. 
Dan kemudian keuntungan itu di akhir tahun setelah uh, dikurangi dengan biaya produksi dibagikan semuanya kepada masyarakat. Sekarang ini kata Pak Willy itu sudah ada 6.285 petani. Bayangkan cukup banyak gitu. Kalau penghasilan mereka rata-rata 1,8 juta rupiah sudah berapa miliar yang didapat dari uh, community development yang dilakukan oleh Pertamina dalam bentuk non cash, bukan uang. This source of energy means that thousands of liters of sap can be processed in Masarang's factory. Every day this truck travels around Tamahon, picking up the product and bringing it to the factory. We routinely collect around 7,000 liters of sugar palm juice each day. It can be more or less. The farmers have also contributed their traditional knowledge to the processes used in the Masarang factory. This here is the bark of a tree that uh, grows in the forest here. And this is what we use to preserve the palm juice. So other people didn't know it, but the local people knew. And it turns out we can also use it as a food conservative. So this is uh, very, very interesting, the traditional know-how that uh, local people have. Each farmer's product is tested for acidity and sugar content before being loaded onto the truck. Masarang now buys unprocessed sap from over 6,000 farmers. Each member of the cooperative has an equal say in decisions. When they join, each farmer makes a commitment to conserve the forest and wildlife. The environment has of course benefited most, not just because there is about 200,000 trees less cut every year to cook all that uh, palm juice here, but also because the people have made a declaration that they, as members of the cooperative of Masarang, will protect the forest and the wildlife around Tomohon. The ethos is that you cannot look after the environment without taking care of people's needs. I'm a member of the cooperative with a palm sugar factory. My income has increased. Before we had the palm sugar factory, I made lump sugar and sold it for a very low price. We're pleased after the opening of the factory because I can have a better income. The income from the sugar that I used to make wasn't enough. This organization has been operating since August 2006, and the farmers are really making more money, an increase of about 200% over what they made before the factory was operating. Yang semula petani itu memasak air nira ini dengan kayu yang ditebangi dari hutan, mungkin ilegal juga gitu. Sekarang sudah tidak perlu melakukan itu. Sekarang menggunakan energi geotermal. Artinya itu bisa menyelamatkan hutan-hutan yang berada di sekitar uh, uh, area ini. At the factory, the tightly controlled process gives a consistent and marketable product. You have seen this done in the gardens, the traditional way. Here it is under clean conditions with the people wearing masks and no dirt can fall in. And we cook it in stainless steel pans that are again heated by geothermal steam. And at the same time, we can arrange the water cooling temperature so we can keep it very stable and we can make a top quality product in this way. So what the factory is selling most is this kind of palm sugar that comes out of that machine right now and goes to the packaging machines. And this is exported all around the world. Now the local farmers here, the welfare of their life is already increased because this uh, factory, you know, they can tap their juice and then bring to the, you know, one place. They get the money so they can build their own house and the children, they can come back to school. Yeah, I think it will improve their life, their quality of life. And it's good for us too because they will feel that we have uh, giving them 
some benefit of our existence here. The environment has also benefited from the Masarang factory. <laughs> so much that the, the hunters have now become uh, sugar palm farmers, but the sugar palm farmers are everywhere in the forest tapping these palm trees and they are telling the hunters, you are not passing by here with that protected bird in your hands there. Let it go or uh, we won't let you pass by here anymore if you do that again. So they have now become the forest rangers. With the factory established, the people are motivated to replant. They replant the sugar palm trees in critical areas. And this action itself conserves the land. In addition to forestry, the Masarang Foundation helps support an animal rescue centre. Orangutans are not native to this part of Indonesia. But Sulawesi is a smuggling route for animals illegally sold as pets. Here, those that are seized are cared for and prepared to be returned to the wild. The animal sanctuary is just one example of the Masarang Foundation's multifaceted approach. Willie Smits hopes to expand in other directions too. We are here with the, the women that are also uh, being helped by the foundation. There are 8,000 women that have enlisted themselves and that want to develop initiatives here. So it is our intention, uh, if we would win the World Challenge, to give that money to the microcredit scheme to help all these women develop their skills and their own initiatives. 